the thing that I was fearing the most happened. And unfortunately, I'm sad to say, but I was kind of anticipating what's, what was going to happen. I was kind of anticipating that after the atrocities that happened, that after many lives of the Muslims have been lost, that after the suffering that have already occurred, and after we gave a reaction, an emotional reaction. Are you with me with this? I was afraid that after all of this, and after our emotional rise, that we, everybody was going go, to go back to normal. As sad as it is, as devastating it is, this is the reality of the Muslims today. Brothers and sisters, the lives that were lost will never come back. The suffering that happened has already happened. And the impact of that suffering will remain with the people that are living today. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people of Gaza. My issue, my brothers, because we're so far, we're on the other side of the world. And this issue is not just with us here as a community. It's an issue with the Muslim nation of a 2 billion human beings. Is that we are a na an emotional nation. Not to say that emotion doesn't play an important part. It, it is. I mean, it is human nature. But the fact that we are driven by emotion as Muslims is devastating. Do you know why? Because Islam is the most strategic decision that you can ever make in your entire life. What do I mean by this? Meaning if you become a Muslim, if you are non-Muslim and you become a Muslim and you chose Islam, this is the most strategic, most successful, most incredible decision you ever take in your life. And if you were born Muslims, like a lot of you here, it's not any different. If you choose the path of Islam, the path of coming to the masjid, like you are here today, may Allah affirm all of you, say Ameen. If you choose this, this is the most strategic decision, the most successful thing you can ever do in your life. But look at it, look at us. We're driven by emotions. Something happened, we rise for a week or two, a month or two, and then like nothing ever happened. Is this what we're supposed to be as Muslims? No, Allah. I swear by Allah, this is not what we're supposed to be. حصل الذي كنت أخشاه وحصل الذي حصل الذي كنت أخشاه وكنت متوقعا نوعا ما أنه سيحصل لكنه أمر حزين أمر مدمر أن بعد كل الأرواح التي خسرناها من المسلمين أسأل الله أن يقبلهم مع الشهداء قولوا أمين ومع كل التضحية ومع كل الآلام ومع كل العواطف التي اندفعت لي نصرة المسلمين في غزة وكأن شيئا لم يحصل بعد شهرين أو ثلاث يعني البارحة كانت كان أقصى يوم وأصعب يوم على أهل غزة ونحن أغلبنا لا نعرف حتى أصلا الذي وقع عاد كل إنسان إلى حياته الطبيعية هذا يدل دليل قاطع حزين محزن أننا أمة إسلامية مدفوعة من العواطف فقط وأنا لا أنقص من العواطف العواطف هي أمر طبيعي لكل إنسان لكن دين الإسلام الذي نزل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والذي قبله الصحابة رضوان الله تعالى عليهم هذا الدين كل صحابي قبله كان أنجح قرار اتخذه في حياته وكل إنسان غير مسلم في أمريكا أو غيره أسلم فهو أكثر قرار استراتيجي اتخذه في حياته وأنجح قرار وكل إنسان مثلنا أغلبنا اليوم هنا هو ولد على الإسلام وقرر أن يمارس هذا الدين ويصلي ويصوم لنصرة الله ونصرة رسوله هذا أنجح قرار اتخذته في حياتك 
الإسلام العاطفة حقيقة أيها الأحبة الإسلام دين استراتيجي والعاطفة لا تلعب دور كبير فيه لذلك وقع الذي كنت أخشاه نحن كأمة إسلامية بعيدين عن فلسطين وعن غزة وإلى آخره تأثرنا في العاطفة شهر أو شهرين والآن لا زلنا متفرقين لا زلنا لا يوجد عندنا علم أنا أتحدث في العموم عامة لا زلنا طوائف وأحزاب وأشياء وللأسف هذا سني وهذا شيعي وهذا 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 والمسميات كثيرة وكثيرة جدا قال الله تبارك وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى said and I don't want to make this خطبة long for you الله سبحانه وتعالى said يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم أو يه بضيف if you support Allah, Allah is going to support you back. Does that mean that Allah needs your money? Does that mean that Allah needs you to get up and fight for him? Does that mean that Allah needs your salah, needs your sir? What is that mean if you support Allah in Tansurullah? What does that mean? In in the Arabic language means if. It's a condition. It's a condition clause sentence. So if you support Allah, Allah is going to support you back. If you study for your exam, you will pass. If you drink, if you eat, you will live. If you take by the means, things are going to work out. If you support Allah by worshipping Him, the way He wants you to worship Him, not according to our desires. If you learn about your religion, if you understand your religion, you know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is going to support you back. If you have the intention to unite the Muslims, Allah is going to support you back. If you have the intention to do a project, to do anything, an organization, a company, a business, you name it, I don't care. As long as the intention is to unite the Muslims in one way, shape, or form, Allah is going to support you back. This is what it means if you support Allah, Allah is going to support you. It doesn't mean that Allah needs your money or needs your, your jihad or needs... No, the moral of the story is that you follow Allah with everything. Not just you take one thing and you leave the other. Everything is required from you. Jihad is required from you, your money is required, your salah is required, everything. You have to give the whole picture. And when I say jihad, the most important types of jihad is jihad al-nafs. وَجَاهِدِ النَّفْسَ وَالشَّيْطَانَ وَعْصِهِمَا وَإِنْ هُمَا إِذَا مَا حَضَاكَ النُصْحَ فَاتَّهِمِي I mean, let's be honest, we're here in America, there's no war, there's no nothing. You know, there's no physical jihad here. So the jihad that is required from you is just to jihad against yourself. It's the hardest out of all. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet وسلم, from the teachings of the Prophet وسلم, is that he taught us إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ مِرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَ إِلَيْهِ And so, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said that indeed actions are rewarded with what? With intentions. You see, it all start with your intention. It all start, the huge change, the huge reward, the success, the unity, the faith, starts with intention. Innama, indeed, your actions are rewarded. You will be rewarded with your intention. And for every person will be rewarded according to his intention. So whomsoever migrates for the sake of Allah and the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then his migration, and listen to the beauty and the eloquence and the language of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
He said, whomsoever migrates for Allah and the Prophet, then his migration will be rewarded for Allah and the Prophet. He repeated it. He said it, he said it twice. And he said, whomsoever migrates for anything other than Allah and the Prophet, and this is the beauty of the language. He said, then his migration is for whatever he migrated for. He didn't even, it's so little to the Prophet وسلم, that he didn't even have to repeat it again. Whatever he migrated for, he will be rewarded. And so one of the funny stories is that this one man, when every, when all the companions were migrating from Mecca to Medina, they would say, oh, so-and-so migrated for the sake of Allah and the Messenger. So-and-so migrated for the sake of Allah. So-and-so migrated for the sake of Allah. But then there was one man, he wanted to marry a woman. Her name is Umm Qais. And she told him, listen, if you want to marry me, you have to migrate. Like, we're in Mecca, I'm going to Medina. Like, I'm following the Muslims. So he said, okay, fine. I'll marry you and I'll migrate. So when they would say, this man is for Allah and the Messenger, this man is for Allah, they said, oh, this one is Muhajir Umm Qais. That's what the, his nickname become. This man is the migrator of Umm Qais. You see, subhanAllah. So this is one of the, the beautiful things that your intention is the most powerful thing that you have as a Muslim. And you need to utilize that. And you need to not just live, you know, with luck and occasion. And if, if things work out for me, it's going to work out. If we unite, we unite. If the hukam, the rulers are good with me, then alhamdulillah. If they're not good, which, I mean, you already know more than me, then the most of them, or a lot of them, are just Muslims by name. Or they were born, you know, just they were born Muslims and they were born, you know, they're by name. That's it. Unfortunately, this is the reality. You choose. You have to shape your future and the future of your nation. There is no other way around it. And it starts with your intention. And it starts with your knowledge of the deen. And it starts with the way you practice the religion. It has to be a, the same way that the companions rose. They rise up to conquer one third of the earth. It has to be the same way. That medicine that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has provided to the companions have to be the same medicine that we have to take in order for us to lead the world. And I know you're saying, Muhammad, you come up here, you want us to lead the world and this is a big responsibility. There's nothing wrong about having big responsibility. Believe me, today the people of Gaza suffer. Tomorrow it might be you. It might be him. It might be us here. You never know. قول ما تسمعون أستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال عليه الصلاة والسلام إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإن لكل امرئ ما نوى فمن كانت هجرته لله وللرسول فهجرته لله وللرسول ومن كانت هجرته إلى دنيا يصيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فهجرته إلى ما هاجر إليه وهذا من جمال اللغة ومن جمال بلاغة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ووحي السماء أنه عندما قال من كانت هجرته لله وللرسول أعادها قال فهجرته لله وللرسول مهمة أما عندما قال ومن كانت هجرته إلى دنيا يصيبها وامرأة ينكحها من استحقاره لهذه لهذا الأمرين لقلة اهتمامه بهما قال فهجرته لما هاجر إليه ولذلك أيها الأحبة النص الوحدة الحقيقية يبدأ في نيتك يبدأ في نيتك والنية هي من أقوى الأشياء التي يملكها المسلم لأنه إذا تبعت النية في العمل تجاز خير الثواب ولا بد أن يكون هذا العمل على القرآن والسنة الدواء الذي أعطاه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم للصحابة الذي جعله من رعاة للغنم إلى قادة للأمم هو نفسه هذا الدواء الذي نحتاجه 
حتى نصبح قادة للأمم أسأل الله تبارك وتعالى أن ينصر المسلمين في كل مكان فهذا أيها الأحبة من الأمور العظيمة وقال يعني من 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 عجائب سور القرآن أن الله تبارك وتعالى في سورة العصر قال الله تبارك وتعالى قال والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر قال إن الإنسان لفي خسر كل بني آدم في حالة خسارة كلهم الكل بدون استثناء إلا من الذين آمنوا ومن وأتبعوا إيمانهم بعمل وعملوا الصالحات والإيمان وعمل الصالحات يحتاج الصبر وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر My brothers, I'm going to conclude and I'm going to finish with this. All I have to say is this, that every, all the six around the world, the Muslims, six around the world, they're calling for everything except learning your religion. Everybody say we're on the Quran and the Sunnah. I mean, even Shia, they say, I'm on the Quran and the Sunnah. Everybody say that. But who's the one that's actually practicing it? When it comes to all these six, they have different objectives. They have different way, different methodologies, different things, different way they operate. But if you are upon the Sunnah, the, the real way, the real victory, if you support Allah, Allah is going to support you back. Learn your religion. Be a great Muslim. Start with yourself. Unite yourself. Unite your family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you victory. He doesn't need anything else from you. Allahumma ghafir al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat al-Ahya'i minhum wa al-Amwat inna tasami'un kareemun mujibu al-Da'awat wa akhiru da'awana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqimu al-Salaat inna salatatana al-Fahshai wa al-Mu'min. Thank <laughs> you.